Okay, they just passed off control of the fire to the guys on the floor. Okay, we have ignition. Turn 50 degrees to the ceiling. Sprinkler operated. Sprinkler operated 48 seconds into the test. fire continues to grow. We bring clients here and they are amazed at how quickly fire develops. They just don't have any concept. <laughs> we have 850 degrees to the ceiling under the unprotected array. We're a minute 30 into the test. You can see the smoke has changed color now. Starting to get much blacker, which means the plastics are involved. I don't much see much fire at all under the sprinkler array. Good, it's already suppressed. That's great. That's what we want to have happen. You can feel the heat through the windows if you're down this end. 1,100 degrees of the ceiling. Any of you know that steel starts to weaken after sustained temperatures of 1,000 degrees or higher? After about 5 or 10 minutes, we're going to get ceiling collapse. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about that here uh, because we use a special cement board as the material up there. Um, what's that? It's a cementitious board. Uh, we can we can withstand about 2,000 degrees, but not for very long. We're at 1,400 right now. Uh, the array is pretty much almost fully involved. We have 15 seconds left. We're going to terminate the test. You'll hear a horn go off, and then these guys will make it look real easy. We're at 1,700 degrees. We peaked at 1900 degrees on the ceiling and we terminated the test. Now, obviously this is only a single row rack. It's only 15 feet high. We tell our clients in your warehouse facilities, we would say you've got multiple racks that are only separated by four foot or eight foot aisles. That fire is easily jumping that aisle space, getting the next rack involved. And that ceiling temperature is just gonna keep climbing. The steel's gonna weaken. You're gonna get a ceiling collapse. And they don't have firefighters standing on the floor with charged hose lines, full gear, ready to just extinguish the fire. They made the call to 911. You saw how quickly that fire progressed. You know, what's the fastest they might get on scene after the initial call? Maybe five minutes that they're outside the building, more likely ten minutes. They have to then identify where is the fire, how far into the building. Are they going to go in, not go in? So you see how effective sprinkler protection can be when it's properly designed. You know, one head, knock that fire down. Yeah, there's smoke damage. We tell our clients there's going to be some smoke damage. There's going to be water damage, but it's much less significant than this uncontrolled fire. It took three minutes, and we consumed almost all the product in the second and third tiers. You see there's quite a bit of smoke in there. And if you notice the ceiling when we were standing on the floor, even before the test began, you might have noticed that it wasn't that nice white color. It was all black. We burned off the soot from the heat. Um, you know, we check these, uh, these ceiling tiles 
they're probably four foot by eight foot tiles. We check them every uh, every day, check for cracks, make sure they're okay. Uh, we get a pretty good amount of life out of them. We've been burning in this building now for uh, eight years, uh, and I'm not sure how many of those uh, tiles have been replaced, but we, we check them all the time. You might notice the windows. Some of you might be standing in front of windows that have a diamond-shaped wire glass. Others of you are standing in front of windows that have a square pattern. The square pattern are new windows. The diamond are the old. Um, we've had a few that cracked. They haven't failed, but they've cracked. We have to replace them. Uh, we run some hot tests here. Uh, you felt the heat from this, but we had 1,700 degrees at the ceiling. Uh, we have storage that goes to 30, 35 feet high. If the protection scheme that we are testing isn't going to achieve control or suppression, the chances